Welcome back to TFC, or Thieves Fan Copes, or Thieves Fan Content, whatever you want to call it. TFC. I know last split, I did one of these after every single game, but given the player walkout and the current schedule going three games in a row, it, quite frankly, it's just not feasible for me to make one of these videos where I actually like sit down, discuss everything, edit it, throw in pictures off to the side. Like, it's just not possible to do one of those for every single game. I've been posting on TikTok and the YouTube shorts here, at least a tiny portion of like an in-game or an after each game reaction. So that's gonna be where that serves. But this will be our weekly roundup of everything 100 Thieves League of Legends for the week. And <laughs> what a fun week to start on, am I right? Let's start with some positives though. Let, let's take a step back before we get into the week's games because the last time we talked, we kind of floundered out of playoffs after losing the Golden Guardians and ever since. We picked up Quid, so obviously a great addition, but he's not here this week. Nuke Duck was, it was the week of the duck, but we got some content prior to that. We got an 18 minute vlog from the team, which I must say was just really nice kind of welcoming someday back, letting people know that Tenacity is going to content creation, and then also just kind of giving people a quick rundown on the team, and then going into a like nine minute team bonding banana boat ride. And I said this on Twitter, but shout out to anybody on the team or management that has ever been on a banana boat, because those of us that have know that they are going to flip you in the end. Like that's part of the banana boat experience is they just yank it real quick and you see it coming. You're like, wait, is this about to happen? And then it flips you over and like, you don't have a choice. Like you're going in the water. So the fact that Double Lift and crew were scared of going in the water and being like, oh, this shouldn't be too bad. And those of us that knew what was coming were like, oh, this is gonna be bad. And it happened, it was great, phenomenal content. I absolutely love that. The Twitter videos we get from the team after each game and you know before the week starts have been great. And the final piece of content is one that I'm proud to say that I was able to partake in was the asking New York City people about team logos. This is the first official piece of content that I've ever done or been in for 100 Thieves. To be clear, I wasn't paid for this. Uh, I did this because I wanted to. And I'd say it overall turned out pretty well. And it's just, it's a really good feeling to know that I've I've officially worked with an LCS org on content. That's, ugh. And my team too, of all teams. Like it just, it feels good. It feels really good, not gonna lie. Speaking of feeling good, that's how I felt after the FlyQuest game. Look, we were winless against FlyQuest this past year. I hope you all understand that. We were 0-2 in the regular season, 0-3 in the playoffs as we got swept in the upper bracket. And yeah, well, like this wasn't a game that I expected us to win, even though I obviously predicted it. Like, we needed something. And we came out hot, turns out, Malio is incredibly busted, so Lucian Malio was great. We absolutely stomped uh, their bot lane with Vulcan and Prince now, which felt really damn good. Mid lane Nuke Duck held his own, and then top lane someday was handling dives like a pro and just absolutely stomping the game to the point where we just took over and won pretty easily, all things considered. Like not necessarily a perfect game, but it like it was good and it gave you like a lot of high hopes going into this place like okay if we can win with nuke duck like yeah this is gonna be a good split the problem is there's more than one day in the week and before i even go into our games it's it sucks because in hindsight now looking at this the win over a now winless fly quest an zero and three fly quest who clearly just cannot find their their foothold doesn't look good like now it looks like we did the bare minimum but obviously like in the moment you feel ecstatic, you feel higher than life. I started popping off on Twitter because I consider FlyQuest to be like the, one of the teams to beat this split as did most other people. And it's like, uh, <laughs> here comes the criticism afterwards. Uh, let's get into game two versus Team Liquid, which again, if we're using that same logic of, oh, we got, we beat FlyQuest who were 0-3 at the end of the week. Losing to Team Liquid in the way that we did actually not bad considering that team liquids 3 and 0 and quite frankly looks like the best team in the league like barn like easily better than cloud nine at the moment now granted they played a little bit of weaker teams and tsm and us for what that's worth and then just absolutely shit stomping immortals but like overall 
the fact that we held our own at the beginning, not bad, but here's the problem. The comp that we drafted, I know a lot of people are going to have problems with it, but when you look at it, it's the exact same comp that TL basically went on to win in like 19 minutes the next day. You can win with this. You just have to have individual advantages the entire game. You don't pick, what, LeBlanc? LeBlanc Kha'Zix. You don't pick that duo to just go even in lanes and trades. You're picking that to make sure that you can get advantages early, gank, get kills, get ahead, and then snowball. Because we we have Cassante as a tank to be able to be able to peel for us as we are as we are taking these fights from ahead. Especially, I mean, bot lane we gave up Malio, what a Felios or what? we gave up Malio period, and then went Lucian Nami. So. We were always on, like, a ticking time on bot lane, but, like, again, Lushinami, you have to win that lane. Bot lane was even, I think, which is not great. Like, that's a lane that you absolutely need to win, because Aphelio scales them to the moon, and then Malio's obviously going to be able to do for, more for him than Nami is for our team and Lucian. So, we weren't able to get ahead bot lane. Fine. Yon and, uh, Yon and Core JJ look really good. Not going to complain about that all that much. Mid lane. I know it's Nuke Duck and not quit. And, but if you're gonna pick this comp, I have the expectation that you're gonna get ahead. And he really didn't. Like, there was a little bit of dancing around each other between Blanc and Ari. But really, we didn't do much. And then top lane, they counterpicked us. Like, they picked the Jacks knowing that they could get the winning lane, or the winning, Jesus, the winning lane top lane. And there's not much Sunday can do about that. It's Summit on Jax. Like, he should be able to win that. And you expect him to. For Sunday, it's just hold on for dear life and let other lanes win for you and be that tank insurance policy if you get into, like, even fights later. But the man we have to talk about, because it's becoming a problem. And originally, this was just, like, after game two. Okay, it's the Cossacks pick. It is what it is. But now you played Lee Sin in game three, and we'll get to that. Closer's champ pool still being an issue but I at this point I don't even think it's Champel. Closer has unfortunately regressed into one of the bottom tier junglers in the LCS at the moment. Now I don't know if Quid coming in is going to revitalize him but he's getting gapped by everybody that we play. Contracts got the best of them in the next game. Uh, Piosic looked amazing versus him like even though Kha'Zix was getting CS and power clearing jungle he's not transitioning that to any leads anywhere we're not getting any ganks he's not getting any kills or getting ahead anywhere and anytime we show up to a fight Piosic was just there and ready even down CS but he's making sure that his team is able to do everything for him he's getting vision on closers so that closer can't make any plays like closers just too readable at this point clearly and I don't know what you do there, because that that's a problem. Like, this is a problem that existed back in spring. And I consistently talked about it, how, like, him and Bjergsen together just weren't... Like, they were one of the worst mid-jungle duos in the league in terms of, like, their expectation versus reality. Whereas, you know, there were people worse than them, but they also had much lower expectations. This is just bad. Like, really bad. And he's got to turn it around heavily like clearly that draft can work we just couldn't make it work because of the players playing the champions and that's a really bad thought to have that you just you can't do anything on these cons that you have to make plays on and then you just slowly lose and die and it's horrible that only became substantially worse in the game versus nrg I was at the bar watching this game. It was a blast. We had fun, uh, like, throughout the entire night. But this was, like, the most boring game to watch. Like, by a very wide margin throughout the entire night. We did nothing. And just rolled over and died. Like, Annie, Lee Sin, Renekton, Yumi Zeri. Yumi Zeri is, like, your insurance policy. But, like, you need to be making plays in the other lanes because you're picking all early game and knowing that you get stomped later you have to be proactive it's Lee Sin it's Renekton we did nothing again like th this game was even more apparent because I'll there's two clips that I want to use from this game to prove my point first and foremost was this bot lane dive Kaboom! 
Only one sliver of HP remaining here on the turret as Closer wants to go in and try to make some kind of a move on these guys, but Ignar and FBI are ready for him. They immediately fight him off. With FBI having all these Chakrams stacked up, the turret is so close to dead. I can't help but wonder if they would have put more damage into the turret first and had the Herald charge maybe after first play breaks. Does it turn into a kill? He can finish it now, though. Contracts is coming. Contracts ready. Remember that Doublelift does not have any summoners. He does not have his ultimate, and he no longer has a turret. The problem for Doublelift Whoa. is that nobody else is around to keep him alive. It's just Busio's exhaust. The Zeri tries to fight and still gets first blood. What is this champion, man? <laughs> Busio's trying to get out, but it's a double kill back over to Contracts. I want you to ignore the fact that we traded one for two. Like, sure, at least we got a kill at the end of the day. But look where our team is. It seems like every time that they're doing something, we're not making a counterplay elsewhere. And we're not seeing this coming. And it's like, you got to do something. Like, if they're going to three-man dive bot, we need to be somewhere on the map doing something. We cannot be backing in base, giving this stuff up for free, and then just letting it snowball from there. Like, you cannot do that. You have to trade a trade around the map somewhere and the fact that we're not doing that is just mind-boggling like absolutely mind-boggling on an early game comp uh -huh. the second and this issue goes a little bit beyond just our macro but this is more personally i think on double lift uh than anybody else and he acknowledged it on twitter so I'm, there's really i'm not gonna go too hard on this but like this clip Stop watching. Not getting a lot of value out of that one. FBI trying to find some time to fire on these guys. Breath of Life trying to keep them alive as Nuke Duck's now going to get chased down by FBI and Dokla. The enemy mid laners down and Energy are looking for more. Dokla's all out. Someday's in trouble. A little bit more damage with another in Topo. Strike double knockback as FBI flashes back over the wall to make sure Double can't hit him. And Someday is still getting chased. It's Double Lift and Busio versus all of Energy as the Scatter of the Week finds Double Lift. He's got to play out of his mind if he wants to win this one. Still being kept alive. The heels, the shields, the speed. Zeri against the world, and the world just said, screw you, energy, get the ace for nothing. <laughs> Did Nuke Duck and Closer go in a little early relative to what the team was probably calling? Sure, maybe, but I'd rather us go in and do something than not at all. Granted, if you want to wait and pick your right time for a team fight, sure, but I don't have the confidence in our team right now to be able to just sit here and constantly say, no, we're going to wait and pick our fight. That's what gets us into this problem in the first place. So the fact that Double Lift is just CSing minions in mid lane and clearing it out and just, oh, bro, we got to get on the same page. And like Quid coming in is not going to change that. Like there's nothing Quid's, like I want Quid to be just as aggressive, like an MS style that is just going in, making these plays, and our team is willing to go in and back him up, and it will make him look really good or really in, but that's fine. And it just feels like right now, like, if that, if Quid comes in and does that, we're just gonna leave him hung out the dry. And I, uh, coordination. Our coordination is just not there. We are stuck between, like, playing, playing back and passive and playing aggressive, and I just don't, it's agonizing. It's legitimately agonizing to watch this, where we just don't, we're stuck between two and we do nothing. And it's not fun for fans whatsoever. The only consolation out of this is that, weirdly enough, our two losses after we beat FlyQuest were the two most watched games of the LCS all weekend. So clearly, like, Doublelift does have that pull still, clearly. I'm not, I'm not naive. I know that, like, if Doublelift wasn't on the team, we probably wouldn't be the most watched. Like, that just is a given in nature of who he is and believe me i'll go into viewership more uh on monday and wednesday there's a lot to talk about there i want to keep these videos to just 100 thieves stuff because starting monday i'm going to have a new series called the pit which will go over the entire lcs in 20 minutes and at the end of 20 minutes baron will come swallow me up and the video will end uh but i'm going to have a you know what grinds my gear segment at the end so like 15 minutes of covering teams five minutes of discussing news and oh viewership's not good anyways i need to end this before i start going down that rabbit hole so yes we're in an iffy spot i'll put our schedule for next week up here with quid in the lineup i'm hoping for good things and quite frankly i know some people are gonna be like oh it might take time to adjust no i saw mns and i saw gory come in 
uh, last split. Gory even came in. Gory did the opposite of what Quid did. Gory literally flew in and just started playing, and it took him a week or two to adjust. Quid did not play, is going to be able to adjust and just, like, go in. I'm expecting us, with Quid, like, if we're seriously going to turn this around, he's going to be the difference maker. Like, we need to... We need to look really good next week. Like, this needs to be a night and day difference because there's only five weeks left of the regular season. And that's it. So you don't have time to sit here and lollygag around. It's got to get done. So, I'm hoping 3021. Obviously, it's a little bit optimistic. But hey, if there's three things that are certain in life, it's death, taxes, and quid, right? I hope that works. We'll see. I don't know. Catch y'all in next week's TFC episode. Be sure to drop a like. Comment down below what player you want to see improve most. I think we're all on the same page on this, but if I'm not, if we're not, let me know. And be sure to drop a or subscribe. Jesus, I, I really need to get better at my promotion of this. Anyways, adios.